He looks like that dog off a of Family Guy. It's Brian. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> hey, I'm Shane with Studio 2 Magic, and this is our friend Charlie. And today we're gonna talk about, he has no idea what we're in store for here. Have you ever used Liquify? I know you have. The Liquify tool on Photoshop. In Photoshop, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty freaking awesome. It gives you some options to do some changes that you could just never do before. Like this. <laughs> In video, it's pretty awesome also, but there are some limitations. So that's what this video is actually about, is how to track liquify in video so that when your character moves, this big blobby eye doesn't just stay there, it moves with them. If you can't track the, the liquify, you're gonna get something like this, which could be really cool for certain things, but that's usually not what you're gonna be going for. So I'm gonna show you a few, um, a few things I've been playing with here. Oh, okay, here's one. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, look how skinny his forearm is, though. That's great. And then we did the same thing. Oh my god. That's sick. It doesn't come off as a muscle. It comes, it, it looks like a tumor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what I did to Ariana Grande. I think it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like a face filter, like one of those apps, you know, that... Um, sure. Well, as far as just working with still photos, using Liquify in Photoshop, yeah, that's just a huge thing that you can do. Right. But having it track in video to where the thing that you've liquefied d goes into a video realm, that's a whole new level. Right, and that's anyway. what we're doing today, tracking Liquify. So what kind of video things can you use this for? That's a damn good question, Ugly Bob. Well, for one thing, changing someone's face. By the way, I have a tutorial on changing eye color right here if you'd like to see it. But for Liquify, I've used it to like reduce people's smiles. Like if someone smiles a little bit in the video, sometimes you can turn the corners of their mouth back down and save the take. You can also manipulate other parts of the body, especially if you use a green screen. You can make someone look skinnier or larger. You can enlarge muscles or other parts of the body. You could also use it for like a trippy background if someone was having a hallucination or something. And there are tons of other things that you might find uses for this. But the one thing that I use, the tracked liquify effect for the most, ends up usually being faces. If you've ever played with the liquify effect on photos, then you've seen how powerful it is. But let's look at tracking it in video so you can get the most out of it. One thing to keep in mind is to try to keep the effect on the inside of the body, not on the edge. If you use it on the edge of something like a body, it's going to distort the background also. If you do want to use the liquify on the edge of a body, try to shoot on a green screen and then when you liquify it in post, the background layer will not be affected. We're going to use this clip. I will show you two ways to track the liquify effect to features on the face. But let's start with the bloat and pucker liquify tools. Those two effects are non-directional, so it doesn't matter how they are rotated. As long as they are tracked to the object, they will look right. So let's go ahead and open up After Effects and get started. Okay, so we are in After Effects and I'm going to use this clip. It's a good clip for this lesson because it has the face rotating, which creates some specific challenges. That's what we're going to cover in next week's lesson, so if you would like these types of videos, consider subscribing and click the bell icon so you can get a notification when that comes out. Today, we're focusing on two methods for tracking. The first method is a method that you would use if you're tracking something other than a face, but it works for a face too, so that's what I'm going to use it on. I want to start by scaling my footage so that my face is a little larger in the frame. Since my layer is now larger than the frame, I need to pre-compose it. This will help keep all the tracking data correct for what I need later. So I right click the layer and I choose pre-compose and move all attributes. Now I can begin with a method of tracking one of the eyes and applying the track data to a null object. So first I will create a new null object and I'll rename it to left eye. Next, I'm going to right click my footage layer and select track and stabilize and then click track motion. I'm going to move my tracker to the middle of the left eye pupil. If I were looking around a lot and my pupil was not staying in the center of my eye, I would track to the outer corner of the eye. But since I'm looking directly at the camera the entire time, the pupil will work for this tracking. I make sure that I'm on the first frame of my footage and my tracker is in place and I click the track forward button. 
After it finishes and I have a good track on the eye, I select the edit target button and I set it to the left eye null and I hit OK and then I hit apply. Now I can see that the null object is tracked to the center of the left eye. So I go to the first frame of my video and I'm going to close my motion tracker drop down just to keep things a little neater. Next, I select the left eye null and I hit P on the keyboard. This will bring up the position data for the left eye null. This is what we want to track the liquify effect to. Now I can drag the liquify effect into my video footage. The distortion mesh offset is where the anchor point for the liquify effect will be. So if it's moving, the effect will be moving. We want it to move with the eye. So if I alt click the stopwatch for the distortion mesh offset, it opens it up in the layers below and now I can pick whip it to the left eye null's position. This will make the liquify effect follow the left eye null. Then I can use the bloat or pucker tool on the eye. The bloat tool and the pucker tool are both non-directional liquify effects, meaning they don't change if they rotate. The warp tool is very directional because you drag it in the direction that you want to smear the footage. Since my face rotates in the clip, these non-directional liquify effects will work best. Again, next week I'll show you how to do the directional liquify and make it work with footage like this where it rotates. I'm going to use the bloat effect and make my eye larger. So I select the bloat tool and I see the circle representing the area of effect for the bloat tool. I want to increase the size of effect area. So I hold the control and the left mouse button down and I move the mouse to change the size. Now I can click on the eye and start making it larger. If you click on the target, the effect won't work. So you might have to zoom in so that you can click near the target, but not actually be clicking on it. After I get the eye as large as I want, I can play the footage and the effect is tracked and will stay on the eye. Now I could continue this same process of creating null objects for the other eye and maybe the nose and mouth and then add the liquify effect for each of them, but I want to show you a second method. This second method tracks most of the facial features for you automatically, so check this out. I'm going to close my liquify effect and get rid of that clutter. Instead of creating a null, I'm going to go to the ellipse masking tool from the top here and then control click in the center of my face and drag an ellipse mask around my whole face. Now I want to look in the tracker window. If you don't see the tracker window, go to the top and under the window drop down, select tracker and it should open up. Under method in the tracker window, I want to choose face tracking with detailed features. This is an awesome tool. If you've never used it, you need to remember that this is there. There's a lot of uses for it. I make sure that I'm at the first frame of my video with the mask on the face and I hit the track selected mask forward button. It creates all of these point trackers on the face and now I can link the liquify effect to any of these points that I want. I still have that mask around my face so the face is all I can see. So I'm going to change the mask from add to none and now I can see all of the footage again. I want to add the bloat effect tool to the right eye. So I open the face track points drop down and then open the drop down for the right eye. I see all of the tracking points for that eye and its eyebrow. I want to use the pupil like I did for the other eye. So I drag the liquify effect into my footage. I alt click the stopwatch for distortion mesh offset and now I can pick whip it to the right pupil. I have to be sure that I'm on the liquify two effects and not the first liquify effect that I dragged in earlier. Since I'll be dragging in a few liquify effects, it's important to make sure that I'm pick whipping the right effect to the right facial tracker. I select the bloat tool from the liquify two effect and set my brush size and I begin bloating the right eye. When I get it to about the same size as the other eye, I can play the footage and I'll see that both eyes are big and the effect is tracked. Now I can play with the distortion percentage to change how big my eyes are and even set up some keyframes to make the eyes all get large at once. For most of these liquify effects, less is better for realism. The more exaggerated the liquify effect is, the more cartoony it's going to look. I'm going to add one more liquify effect and go through the same process, but track this one to the nose. Next, I use the pucker tool, which is basically the opposite of the bloat tool, and I shrink my nose. I could continue to add as many of these non-directional liquify effects as I want like this, but when I use a directional effect like warp, 
It doesn't act right when the face rotates, but we are going to show you how to do that next week. When you can track the rotation of the face also, it really lets you do some wild stuff. It's pretty cool. That video will be out in one week, so be sure to come back. If a week has already passed, then I'll put a link for it right here. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and I'm almost faded out, so bye.